No, I, I think if I want to ex explain it in one word, <laughs> would be unique. Um, meeting Yoyo Ma, which happened um, before the project started, and for another purpose actually. So um, that was very important, and then I. I was asked to be part of this project, write some music for it, and um, you know, I, I had my doubts and I didn't really know what it's going to be like and everything. And um, I think everybody started like that, and we're still searching for um, new ways, new ideas, and what we can do, but um, our minds are more in the direction of um, um, unity and, and something we could do together. And uh, when you have um, a number of um, brilliant musicians, the possibilities are endless. And what happens uh, can be very, very extraordinary. Ever since I've been involved in the project, um, I learned a lot, first of all. And uh, this might sound like a cliche, I learned a lot, you know, I did, but, but I really learned. You know, I'm not just saying that. Uh, because, uh, I tell you why, because I'm a solo musician. And I, 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 I was brought up in a solo tradition. Uh, we are um, trained as solo musicians. And that's something that becomes uh, part of our character as a musician. We're not um, taught to share and share anything, stage, music, whatever. We're soloists. So, um, and improvisers. So, um, it is kind of difficult to become involved in, a, in such a project when you have to share with 40 people or 30 people or other musicians and read music and, you know, do all these things that, uh, you know, for, for a musician such as myself could be very demanding sometimes. But the outcome was uh, very interesting for me. And, um, it is nice to to learn to share, and <laughs> yes, I play kamanche. Uh, kamanche literally in Persian means um, the little hunting bow. Kaman means hunting bow, and che is the diminutive for the, for the for the word. So kamanche is the name of an instrument. I think um, as uh, for any any other bow bow string instruments, kamancha was a plucked string uh, instrument once and was played, you know, maybe on the lap or held like this. And then after discovering this, uh, the bow um, becomes a bow this bow instrument. Um, there are different kinds of uh, kamancha. Mm, around Central Asia and mostly and um, with different shapes and uh, length of the neck and different number of strings. The Persian Kamancha um, usually has a hollowed um, belly which can be turned out of a solid piece of wood or um, put together uh, ribs of different kinds of wood, usually walnut or mulberry. And then it has a long neck, usually um, 30 to 32 centimeters. Four strings, this is the mother kamanche actually, um, it used to have two and then three, but uh, in the beginning of the century, 20th century, uh, they added the fourth string, uh, which was an imitation of violin. Um, so, um, the, s the strings are s made of steel, uh, but, uh, again, 
um, not long time ago they used um, silk for the strings and um, after being introduced to western violin they used um, steel strings and um, the mouth of, of the belly is covered with a, a piece of skin which the bridge falls on it and um, because of the, um, the the shape and the piece of the skin it has a different sound quality it's a little reedier I started when I was five with violin and then uh, there was this old master who I still admire very much, Ustad Bahari and uh, I, I, I saw him on TV you know every now and then and his style, the sound of the instrument really uh, caught my attention and, and, and I became really fascinated with the sound and uh, I didn't have a Kamancha teacher, you know, back then. I just bought a Kamancha and started on my own. Uh, and later on, I found teachers because w where I lived, there weren't any Kamancha teachers. And um, this is very interesting, actually, because um, when Western violin was introduced uh, at the end of 19th century to to Persian music, a lot of people uh, played that and just uh, put Kemancha aside. And it was fashionable, it was Western, it was chic, you know, so they, they just didn't like to play Kemancha anymore. So he was one of the masters who held on and then um, played Kemancha all his life, never switched to violin. And um, in that time he was the only master who was playing that instrument. And his existence was very crucial to the history of Kamancha and uh, you know I'm very fascinated always with his playing and, and his role in our musical culture uh, but nowadays there are many young players because he continued on playing Kamancha is very important in, in, in Luristan folk music, which is, uh, which is in a state in central Iran. And um, a lot of that rep uh, music, the repertoire of Luristan music, or Luri music, as we call it, uh, I studied those as well. So um, a combination of folk and traditional music uh, that are played on Kamancha in, in, in modern Iran and with different styles and it's amazing when you're looking for something that doesn't exist and how much you, f you can find and first of all Kamancha uh, can be tuned um, in fourths or fifths according we, we, we change the tuning according to the scale or the daska we play um, usually uh, this is the, the most common uh, tuning. D A D A. 
or step lower. G, um, what was it? C, G, C, G, or uh, it could be um, E, A, D, G, like violin, or, um, you know, any combination of different tunings in fourth and fifth, or third, or fourth. Um, the lower um, string, is now that it's tuned in on A, 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 could be tuned on G or F. Um, and uh, you know you could play up to the fifth position comfortably and um, you know any kind of um, speed the difficulty on Comanche is that the, I usually actually don't play Comanche like this I, I play it sitting on the ground but it's still difficult to hold the Comanche upright and um, you know the the, the Boeing Camanche is a, is kind of tricky because the, the, it's not unlike violin that the hand moves and uh, and the elbow and bow are involved and, and the wrist are involved in the process of bowing in Camanche you just bow and the instrument turns so it makes it different from violin and and uh, but. Uh, in the same time, it gives you possibility of um, doing things like a lot of turns involving all the instruments and, and, and double stops or triple stops. Yeah. And uh, the ornamentations traditionally are endless, but these are the most common ones. Or, you know, double fast notes like something like these and you know the, the, the right hand is very comfortable and can do very fast notes very fast sixteenths or, or you know thirty seconds or whatever but, but the nicest things on uh, mel melodies in Kema on Kemancha are uh, very cantabile very um, slow melodies um, that um, you know have um, some kind of warmth in them to write something you know very slow and, and elegant uh, as well as you know fast passages and, and things like that.